What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? It's your boy, Goblin, and today we're coming in with a banger. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Drop a like if you do. And also, if you guys haven't subscribed to my second channel yet, go drop a sub on that. You already got two videos up, and we got another one coming soon. So make sure you're subscribed to my second channel. We got stream highlights, smoking videos, all types of stuff on there. But either way, hope you guys enjoy this video. Drop a like if you do. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And without further ado, let's dive right into the video. So, this took place in my junior year of high school, back during my Xanax days. And for those of you guys who might be new here, uh, I went through quite the Xanax phase during my, my junior year of high school, right? It was during my first semester, during the fall of that year, that I really got heavy into it. And it was at the point where I was taking them every day and multiple times a day, you know? Uh, at my peak, at one point, I was popping, like, probably three or four bars a day. But it was a fairly short-lived thing. It, was, it really only lasted for that semester, honestly. But... Either way, uh, because of that habit, I was kind of selling Xans on the side. I had a girl that I knew who would take her grandma's Xanax, as terrible as it was, and sell it to me in the library in the mornings at school. So I would take these bars and sometimes I'd sell them, sometimes I'd take them. It didn't matter, you know? And it was really nice once her grandma got her prescription up. I'll tell you what, hey, that shit went crazy, but... These were not those bars. This was just kind of how I was making some money. The bars I had on this particular day were from a completely different person because that girl couldn't get me any. But I still had a good bit of money on me from selling those bars pretty recently, right? By a good bit of money, I mean like $120, which back then, that's a lot of fucking money, man. Hey, little 16-year-old me fiend, that, hey, that's got me set for a week or two, bro. I can make that stretch. Are you kidding me? But either way... My buddy Jimmy hits me up on this particular day, and he asks if I have any bars. I tell him that I don't have the normal ones that I'd serve him. However, I did have a couple extra that if he needed some, I could hook him up. Jimmy's been a longtime friend of mine. I've honestly probably known this guy longer than almost anyone else. Like, I've known this guy for, for almost two decades. I, like, I grew up with this kid, right? So... He hits me up and he asks if I have any bars, and I'm like, yeah, uh, I have a few of my personal ones, they're not the same ones, but they're pretty good, you know, I can bring them through for you. So I hop in my car, and I've got a couple bars on me, I've got about four, and I've also got some weed. I start whipping over to Jimmy's house, and on my way there, I pop just one of these, right? I decide, you know what, we'll start out kind of light. So I get over to Jimmy's house, and I bring my bud, and I bring the bars in, and it's nobody home at Jimmy's. Jimmy has one of the best cribs ever to hang out at. Like, it is so nice. His house is insane. He's got a super dope sunroom. He had, like, a really cool finished basement. Like, his house was dope. So I, whenever he'd invite me over, I'm sliding, dude. It's a great place to be. So... I get in there, and Jimmy's chilling. You know, he dashed me up, and it had been a little bit since we'd seen each other, you know? So we're catching up a little bit and talking, and he tells me that he wanted to grab two bars. So, of course, I'm like, yeah, dude, you know, I, I got you. So I throw him the two bars. He throws me a little bit of money. I don't remember how much he gave me, like 10 bucks or some shit. I don't know, dude. He gave me some cash either way. And we get to chilling. We're trying to figure out what to do because, you know, I, I mentioned, I'm like, yo, you know, we, we should kick it for a little bit. And he's like, yeah, dude, no one's going to be home for a while. So I've got some time to blow. Like, let's smoke some weed or something. So we're sitting at his dining room table and his gaming setup was at the dining room table. Now, this was not his gaming setup. It was his dad's like work setup that he just used to play games because his computer was super outdated and I don't even think it worked anymore at this point, right? If it did, he probably wouldn't have been using his dad's fucking HP, but that's beside the point. So we're chilling at the dining room table and I, I feel I need to kind of explain. No, actually, no, we'll do this part later. All right. So we're chilling at the dining room table and he's on the computer and I'm sitting next to him rolling up a blunt. He's playing some League of Legends, and we're just kind of chilling out and taking turns playing the game, you know? Uh, for those of you guys who haven't played it, each game, you know, if you play like an ARAM, it's 20 minutes long. So you, you could kick it, you could switch out pretty quick, right? So we're playing ARAMs and just switching back and forth, you know? And we're chilling out, and it comes to be my turn to play. His computer, his dad's computer, pardon me, is directly under his dining room table, but 
let, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe this. Do you guys know those dining room tables where they like fold out and into themselves to like have more people at the table? You know what I'm talking about? I've only ever seen these a few times. Like they're not, I don't think they're super common anymore, but I remember like my grandpa used to have one. They're those like the ends of it they'd fold in and like under the table in case you wanted like a shorter table. You know what I'm talking about? So this table had that, but the ends were folded out, right? And where we're sitting at on the table, the monitor is set up almost right over the crack in the table. And the computer is set up directly under the crack of the table. Some of you guys might be able to see where I'm going here. Now, when it's my turn to play, uh, we're sitting there and I'm playing the game and Jimmy decides that he's just going to take both of his bars then and there. So he eats both of them. I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, my dude, I mean, hey, go crazy, I guess, you know, like go crazy. And these were just some ladders. These were some little two milligrammers. Honestly, God knows if they were real. Probably not. I was young and dumb, but they were allegedly two, two milligrammers, not two grammars, pardon me. Um, but either way, so. We're chilling, and he just popped us two bars, and I'm feeling pretty good off my one. I had finished rolling up the blunt about ten minutes prior, and once my game finished, we got up and we went to go smoke in his sunroom. We're standing in his sunroom, and we're smoking up, and I'm feeling great. I'm feeling fantastic. This bar, whether it had Alp or Fent in it, hit me like a truck, and I was feeling fantastic, I'll tell you what. I was chilling. We're sitting there talking a little bit, and we're, we're just like, man, you know, like this is fucking great, like, these bars are really good, and I'm kind of telling him, like, how I'm feeling, because he's asking, he's like, how are these, you know, like, I just took two of them, how am I going to be feeling, so I'm describing how I feel to him a little bit, we smoked this blunt, and by the time we're done smoking it, I don't know what it did to me, but it definitely put that Xan on crack, put it on meth, because I was barred out off just one of these things, I was feeling incredible, the synergy between whatever butt I smoked that day, and the Xan was fantastic, it had to be some indica, because I was feeling great, I was chilled out, so we go back inside, and I asked Jimmy if he wanted to play next, I'm like, yo, you know, it's your turn to hop on, and he's like, nah, dude, I'm, I'm probably good for now, if you want to play another one, you know, like, I, I don't know, I, I might try to roll a blunt or something, and Jimmy was pretty bad at rolling blunt, so he wanted to give it a go. Like, he wanted to practice. So I was like, you know, I don't know if that's the best idea Idea while you just took two Zans, but, I mean, be my guest, bro. I'm not going to stop you. So I pass him a little bit of weed in the remaining wrap that we have left, and I sit back down and start playing. Jimmy gets up, and he goes and grabs a, a Coke. I think it was a Coke. I don't know, a can of soda, right? We'll call it a Coke. It just makes it easier. He goes and he grabs a Coke. He cracks that bad boy open and sits back down. Now, I'm playing the next game, and by this point, it's pretty obvious that the bars had just hit Jimmy, because he was going slow-mo. I'm looking over from time to time to look at him rolling the blunt, and I shit you not, it took this guy almost 10 minutes to gut it. He's sitting there gutting this thing with precision, like he's in Squid Games, dude. I've never seen someone focus that hard on gutting a blunt in my life, dude. It looked like someone put a fucking Glock to the back of his head and said, if you don't gut this in an exactly 180-degree angle straight line, I'm blowing your brains out. Holy shit, he was focused. But he puts his drink down, and it's pretty close to where my hand is while I'm moving the mouse, right? He's sitting to the right of me, I've got my hand on the mouse, and he puts his drink down pretty close to the mouse, right? I notice it, you know, and I, I kind of adjust my hand a little bit, but I go back to playing the game. I'm chilling on the game, and I'm barred out, and so is he. So I completely forget there's a drink next to me. And I don't remember what I was doing in the game, but at one point, I just whipped my hand to the right, right? I don't know what I was doing. I was probably in a team fight or something. But I whipped my hand to the right and knocked the soda over, right? Now, this soda can's over at this point, and it is, like, rolling around the table, and it's leaking. But we don't think shit of it. It's, like, rolling in a little circle. We're like, whatever. We're laughing. We're like, Haha, look, look, dude, it's fucking, it's spinning, man. Like, we're, we're sitting there laughing. We are thinking nothing of this at all. I'm giggling, dude. I'm, I'm having the time of my life. I'm, I'm barred out, and I just find this hilarious. Finally, I get up in slow-mo, dude. I watch, we, J, Jimmy and I both, we sit there, and we watch this can spill until it's almost completely empty. And I finally get up and go grab a paper towel, and I think nothing of it. I go grab a paper towel, and by the time I get back and wipe up the mess, I sit back down at the computer, and it's off. Now, I'm like, okay, you know, may, maybe Jimmy turned it off. Maybe it got unplugged, you know, I, who knows? 
So I've wiped up all the soda and I reach down to turn the computer back on. I turned, I press the button, I try to turn it on, and as you could guess, it did not turn on. Now, at this point, I'm pretty concerned because I'm like, yo, this is not my computer and I don't have the money to replace this. This is fucked, right? So I'm like frantically pressing the power button and I get under his table and then I realize what really happened. I figured the power cord just came loose. Maybe I moved the computer with my foot. But as I got under the table, I realized the power cord was not loose. Instead, the entire back of the PC was moist. It was wet. It was getting sticky. And I quickly realized that the, the coke that spilled went through the gap on the table and ran down the back of the computer. What's on the back of the computer? The power supply. So... I'm pretty dead certain that is what happened on this computer and why it wouldn't turn on. I'm pretty sure I fried the power supply with Coca-Cola. But I'm starting to tweak. And Jimmy notices I'm under the table and he's like, yo, what happened? I'm like, dude, the computer's not turning on, bro. Like, I think it's fucked, dude. I keep trying to press the button. I unplug it and plug it back in. Jimmy's like, nah, let me see, man. Let me see. So I, he gets in there and he's doing the same thing as me. He's just pressing the button. He's like, fuck, dude, this spilled on that? And I was like, yeah. And I'm sitting there and I feel really bad. Like, I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry, bro. Because, like, this is my homie. I've known this guy forever, dude. Like, we went to the same kindergarten, you know? I've known this dude forever. So I feel terrible. I'm like, Jimmy, I'm so sorry, bro. Like, like I'm, like, I didn't mean to do this, dude. Like, my bad. Like, let's figure out how to fix it, dude. Like, let's try to fix it or something, right? So we're, we're sitting there and we're barred out of our minds. We have no idea what to do. It's like 5 or 6 p.m. at this point, right? And the sun's going down. So we're sitting there trying to figure out, we're on YouTube looking up like computer won't turn on or like power supply fix. And we realized pretty quickly after reading all the Google and YouTube answers that, yeah, uh, we're fucked. This thing's fried. Neither of us were like super good with computers. I know how to use a computer just fine, but I didn't really know. I've never built one. Still to this day, I've never built my own PC, but I knew a lot less back then than I do now, right? Because like I've swapped stuff out nowadays, but when I was young, I was dumb as hell. Everything I have is pre-built, so I didn't know shit. So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, fuck, bro. Like, like I don't think we can fix this. So I'm freaking out, and Jimmy's like, dude, my dad's gonna be pissed, like, we have to replace this today, dude. So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, yo, I got, I got 120 bucks, like, what can we do to get some money, bro? Like, I have one Xan in my pocket, and maybe a gram and a half or two grams of weed. Uh, how are we getting a computer out of that? So we're sitting there discussing, and the idea comes up that we go steal one. We're like, yo, what if we just go fucking steal a PC, you know? Like, like how, how would that work out? So we actually are stupid enough to think that we could go do this. So we get in my car and we go drive up to Best Buy and we're, we're walking in and we're talking to each other. Even on our way in, we're discussing this like absolute fucking idiots. I'm pretty sure the security guy could have heard us, but that's beyond the point. We're walking in and I'm like, dude, listen, we got to like, we just got to like fucking run, dude. Like we just got to take it and dip. And normally I would never try to steal something this absurd, but I was desperate. This was one of my closest friends and I just ruined his dad's work computer. Like that's how they make money. We got to replace this. Like we got to fix this, you know? So we walk into the Best Buy and I'm like, dude, we're, we're going to fucking steal this computer. We go over to the back right where all the computers are. Of course, they're tucked away in the corner. They've got all the laptops, all the desktops and stuff. An employee comes up to us and asks us what we're looking for. I tell him we're just browsing for now, and I'm kind of scoping out the store, and I realize pretty quickly that I'm A, stupid as hell, and B, barred out of my mind for thinking that Best Buy would ever have a desktop computer outside of a locked case. I'm an absolute idiot for thinking that was even possible. So we're standing there and we're just like, yo, th this isn't going to happen, bro. Like, we'd have to do some, like, GTA heist shit. Like, we'd have to come in with masks and straps to get a PC out of that case. There's no way. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, fuck, dude. Because I'm, I'm tweaking. Like, Jimmy, you could tell Jimmy's like, he's pissed. But he's also trying to be cool with me about it, which I appreciate it. So, like, I was sitting there and I was just like, fuck, dude. Like, shit. Like, what are we going to do, you know? So... I'm trying to figure this out, and I, I pull out my last lifeline. I bust out the phone, and I call my mom, and I explain the situation to her. Luckily, I wasn't too barred out, so I was still able to kind of explain it to her, but I just said, Mom, listen, 
I, I accidentally broke my friend's computer. Uh, I broke Jimmy's computer. And luckily, my mom knew Jimmy, so she was much more likely to be sympathetic to this. I was like, listen, Jimmy's computer broke. I accidentally messed it up. Like, can I borrow some money? I'll pay you back, I promise. And I'm pleading at this point. I'm freaking out because I have 120 bucks. Jimmy told me he had a little bit more. He had like 150 in his account. $270 is not getting shit in the computer department. I'm going to lay it out. Uh, maybe a Chromebook. But this was not a Chromebook. This was a whole ass PC. So my mom ends up saying yes a bit reluctantly after I basically beg her. I'm telling her, I'm like, yo, listen, I'll fucking get sober, mom. I swear to God, I'll never smoke weed again. I'll go to church. I'll do fucking anything. I'll block all my friends who have ever looked at weed. If any of my friends can spell weed, I'll block them. I promise. And she took it. She took the bait. So she sends me some money, right? So now I'm feeling a little more calm. I'm like, okay, we've got some money. I can figure out how to pay back my mom, you know, probably with, I don't know, drug money or maybe fucking work. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But at this point, I'm feeling better. We've got enough money. We should be good. Collectively, we had a about just like it was around 600 bucks it was like a little under so we're looking at the budget pcs but luckily the computer that we broke was not very crazy it was just your average like hp pavilion type of work computer you know it was nothing special at all so we're like okay well let's just find one that looks pretty similar and it's not hard to find a work computer that looks like another one because they all look identical so we found one for i think it was like we got a really good deal, actually. It was like 450 bucks. It was on sale. I remember that. And we picked it solely because it was on sale, and it looked pretty similar to the old one. Same brand and everything. So we were like, bet. Let's grab this. We buy this shitty little computer. We pay for it, and we dip out of the store. We get out of there and drive on back to Jimmy's house, right? Once we get back to Jimmy's house, we unbox this computer we set it up, we put it on the ground, we plug everything into it, the monitor, the keyboard, all that stuff, the mouse. We turn it on, and we realize really quickly, we forgot a big, big, crucial step. We forgot the fact that his dad's gonna know because the hard drive is wiped. So we're thinking to ourselves, we're like, yo, we already replaced the computer. Like, if we do this right, his dad won't even know. You know, like, well, we'll be good. His dad won't be mad. Jimmy will be good we're all good he's got a newer computer like bet dude this works right but we realize very quickly that we now have the task of disassembling the computer and taking the hard not disassembling all you have to do is take a panel off and taking the hard drive out normally that's not a hard task but when you're barred out that becomes a lot more overwhelming so we're sitting there and we start unscrewing the little side bolts on this computer and we pull up a YouTube video. We're both sitting on the floor under his fucking dining room table watching a YouTube video about how to, like, replace a hard drive in a PC. So I'm taking the, the panel off of the old broken one while Jimmy's taking the panel off of the new one. And we realized that we got to put this thing in quick, right? Because by the time he got back from Best Buy, it was like 7 or 7.30 at night, right? His dad was not going to be out for much longer, so, and he's aware of it. He's telling me this. He's like, we got to do this quick. Like, I think my dad's going to be home kind of soon, right? And I'm tweaking the fuck out. I'm like, dude, I can't have Jimmy's dad mad at me. I'm never going to be allowed here again. So I'm watching this YouTube video and I've got the side panel off of the computer. And I realize I took the wrong panel off. So I flip it around and I take the other side panel off. And now we're good to go, right? luckily the hard drive was seated right at the bottom almost it was almost presented to me you know you look down in the tower and bow there it is and at this point I was a little less barred out than before because I, I guess panic had set in a little bit of adrenaline a little bit of oh shit moment kind of set in I was like okay I gotta fix this you know I'm not feeling too zooted anymore so I unscrew the other hard drive and we had to go find luckily Jimmy had a toolkit in a closet that was like fucking right next to where we were sitting but i had to unscrew the hard drive right so i take this little screwdriver this tiny little thing and i unscrew it right i take it out jimmy's got the other hard drive of the other computer taken out right we swap them beautifully but we realize very quickly that we mixed up the fucking bolts they're not the bolts the screws the nails i don't know whatever you want to call them dude i'm not a technical son of a bitch all right 
we put all of the all the screws that we took out of the hard drives on each computer in the same pile on the ground. So we're looking, and we're like, fuck, dude, like, these are very similar sized, but, like, not quite the same, and it's fucking with me. And we're barred out, and even though there's literally only eight fucking screws on the ground, we're both too stupid to figure it out. We're like, dude, it looks like it should fit, but it shouldn't. We're trying to, like, force it in and shit, and we give up. We give up on the on the great screw scramble, and we decided to just scotch tape the thing down. So that's exactly what we did. We went and grabbed some scotch tape, and we taped it down, and we plugged it back in, and we put the side panel back on that new computer and turned it on. And voila, it was beautiful. It worked perfectly. Everything was great. And we saved the damn day. Now, after that, I was feeling pretty shitty. I was feeling bad. I took another Xan after that because I needed it. And we rolled up another blunt, but we didn't have time to smoke it because he got a text that his dad was about to be home. Luckily, his dad asked if he wanted to pick up food for him, which was kind of our saving grace because we forgot the guy even existed. We were getting so lit towards the end there, right? But... I rolled up that blunt, and once I left, you know, I I took the blunt with me, and I faced it on my way home. I don't know what Jimmy ever did with the computer, but I don't think his dad actually ever figured it out. The computers we got were damn near identical. Like, I'm pretty sure it was just a newer generation of, like, the same PC, dude. They were damn near identical, and maybe his dad figured it out, but I guess he didn't care. I never heard about it. Like, I never heard back about this. So, Operation Success in my eyes, but dude, that shit was a catastrophe. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to my second channel linked in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, gamers.